Okay, so this is my Raspberry Pi 5. I've got an SD card in with Raspberry Pi OS on it. And as you can see, all I've got plugged in is the USB-C cable and the ethernet cable. And here's my MacBook. And if I go to the top here, I can access my Pi. So if I hit reconnect, waiting for a response from Pi, and let's log in. And I have my Pi desktop. Now I can use my Pi just as if it was native on here. Uh, so let's do some updating because uh, I haven't updated this one for a few days. And let's upgrade. And also there's a newer version of remote uh, that I've got. So I'm going to update that as well. And while it's updating, if I move the pointer, you can see there's like a pointer that it catches up to. And I really like that for being accurate because you can definitely get to the spot before the pointer is there and click. So it's nice and responsive. And you can see if I click on the Raspberry while it's doing this, all of this seems to work pretty well. And also while it's updating, let's just have a look at the official documentation. Now, you've got to have a password to log into this at the moment, but come Tuesday, uh, which is when this video should be out, everything should be all up and running. So we can see here, Raspberry Pi Connect provides secure access to your Raspberry Pi from anywhere in the world. So you've got to install the Connect software and I'll show that in a minute. And then you visit connect.raspberrypi.com to access your Raspberry Pi via any web browser. And when you log in, the password that you log in to do the remote access is your Raspberry Pi password. I was putting the wrong password in for a while, first of all, but it would be whatever you use for your name of your Pi and your password. So you can see here, Connect requires a Raspberry Pi running 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS bookworm. It's using Wayland, and this was one of the issues with VNC doesn't work with Wayland. VNC is the, the main remote desktop that I use, and I still really like it. Definitely works better with touchscreens um, than Raspberry Pi Connect, although I haven't tried the latest version yet. But with a mouse and keyboard, this works great. Really, really good. So if I go back, still going, and you see it's remained connected. And this is one of my AI wallpapers. I've got a separate video on how to create your own AI wallpapers if you're interested. And with the software, you can have multiple Raspberry Pis and it gives you lots of status and information about them. And I see here, there's a sudo apps install only upgrade RPI connect. That's interesting, let's try that one. So I'm not sure if I can paste this in, let's try it. Yeah, that's cool. So click back on here and hit enter. Okay, so the update put it up to the latest version anyway. Let's reboot. And you see on the site connect.raspberrypi.com, we have this connection screen. You can see various different information about your Pi. Let's connect to it. Not sure if it will automatically connect on restart or if I need to sign in on the Pi. There you go, so we're back in. And you can see here, this is how you can sign in. So you can see you can allow screen sharing, you can turn that on and off, and you can also sign out if you definitely don't wanna be connected to it. But this is the little symbol you get from installing Raspberry Pi Connect. And we call it the web browser just to show what it, what it performs like. And if we do a search for BBC Sport, you can see it comes up pretty quick. Let's just click on that. And if we put two fingers on the trackpad, we can scroll up and agree to all the cookies and everything. And yeah, that red dot, I just really like the way, I mean, it, it's almost not needed because this connection is nice and fast. But if you have a slow connection where it takes a little bit of time, like it lagged a little bit there, you can just get to something and then click on it and it definitely feels more responsive. So I'll put a link in the description to the website and all the documentation for this. This will all be available come Tuesday. And as I mentioned before, it's accessible from anything with a web browser. So you can just click on it and log in and connect. And I haven't tried two devices at the same time, so we'll see what happens. Uh, so if I tap on the screen, yeah, you can see the mouse point has come up here. So it looks like you can have both working at exactly the same time, which may come in handy, especially for collaboration. So great work by everybody at Raspberry Pi Towers. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.